I want to talk about two things in this video, polls and unintended consequences. Looking at a poll the other day, of the morning the news came out, Biden was up by eight. I thought, oh my God, you know, looks like it's Biden going to win? How could that be? But then a little bell went off in my head. I said, wait a minute. Polls were off four years ago. What about this poll? I don't remember which poll it was. He said, it's XYZ poll. So I Google XYZ poll. October 2016. Bingo. Guess what? Four years ago, the poll said Clinton was up by nine. I said, well, and she lost. I mean, she did win in a popular vote. I think she won by 2.1%, but that's not enough to carry the Electoral College. But I said, four years ago, this poll was saying the same thing. And they were just dead wrong. But then something else hit me. Why were they wrong? And that's where the unintended consequences come in. And that's what I want to focus on in this video. Is it possible, I wonder, that these polls, which showed Clinton so far ahead, actually dampened her vote, held it back, held it down? I mean, think about it for a second. It wasn't just that poll. You had the New York Times, you had the, the Vaughn, you know, Nate Silver, 538, you know, 97, 94% chance, whatever it was, that Clinton was going to win. Tears of shoe in. She couldn't lose. You remember watching the media that night? They were in shock that Trump won. Nobody thought he was going to win. And then I wondered, if did the fact that she was so far ahead in the polls cause some people to not vote? You didn't have to cause a lot of people not to vote. If you look at the election and you look at the counties where she lost ground compared to, not Donald Trump, but compared to Barack Obama in uh, 2012 or 2008, you know, she hadn't had, she didn't have a turnout Obama had. Now, of course, Hillary Clinton isn't Barack Obama. She's not as likable, charismatic, or any of the other things that Barack Obama was. And that's part of it. But because of that, because she's not all that exciting, like Obama, you really need turnout. And then, you know, I, I asked the obvious question. We know a lot of people don't vote in this country. Roughly 50% don't vote in presidential elections, in primary elections and other local elections. It's sometimes down, you know, between 30 and 40 or sometimes even in the high 20s. So we know a lot of people don't vote. So they don't vote all the time. I mean, obviously they vote in a presidential election, we may not vote in a primary election. I've done that myself many times. But does the prospect of your candidate winning an overwhelming victory make you more or less likely to drag yourself through the polls and vote? And that's the question I started to think about. Now, this isn't a scientific approach, but I'm going to use myself as an example. In 2016, I was not very enthusiastic about Donald Trump. I'm a registered Republican. I had some real questions about him. I, when he announced, I never thought he'd even get the nomination, let alone be elected president. My favorite candidate was Marco Rubio from Florida. And I thought he was the stronger candidate. So when it came to the time of the primary, I went and I voted for Marco Rubio, not for Donald Trump. Now, after the primary, Trump won in Florida and nationally and secured himself a nomination. I decided I'd vote for Trump because whatever my problems with Trump were, I had much larger problems voting for Hillary Clinton, whom I had never liked. So I decided I would vote for Donald Trump, which I did in November. Now, since then, I've become kind of a convert to Trumpism. I mean, in 2016, I didn't give any money to Trump. This cycle, I have. Matter of fact, I have a recurring donation that goes in every month. So I've supported Trump. I've got the, the MAGA hat that they sent me. I got a picture of, you know, signed by Trump and all that kind of stuff. You get the paraphernalia you get when you do donate for one reason thing or another. So I'm much more keen on Trump than I was four years ago. Like light years ahead in terms of voter enthusiasm on my part 
for Trump in 2020 as I was in 2016. But when we had the primaries here, and there was basically, I forget who else was a weld or somebody else, with a couple of people on the ballot, but they weren't getting any traction anywhere. And there was no doubt that, you know, Trump was going to win the Florida primary. And although a lot of Republicans and Trumpists were supporting Trump and going out and voting in record numbers for a primary of an incumbent with very little meaningful opposition, virtually no meaningful opposition, I didn't move in the primary. I said, uh, you know, I forget what was going on that day. I had something I had to do in the morning and I could go in the afternoon, but I had an exercise routine and I usually take a nap and, I thought, oh, you know, it's worth it. He's going to win anyway. What the hell? So I didn't go. I didn't move. And then I, I started thinking about that and I started thinking about what's going on in the polls now and putting the two together and wondering if other people, you know, who are what you might call iffy voters in 2016 didn't vote because they thought Hillary Clinton was a shoo-in. There are three kinds of voters. Now keep in mind, presidential elections, about 50% of the people don't vote. Now, there are three kinds of voters overall. What I would call, you know, always voters. The people who always will vote. Doesn't matter what the situation is. Doesn't matter. There'll be a tornado going on. These people are going to drag themselves to the poll and vote. I'm like that in presidential elections. I've never missed one since I could vote. First one was 1972. Voted for George McGovern of all people. Then you have the never voters. The people who have never voted. They don't even register. And you have that group. And then you have the group in the middle who are what I would call the iffy voters. They'll vote if, you know, if they're motivated, if the weather is nice, if this, if that. And it's very hard, you know, looking around on the internet for articles and things to try to figure out what these percentages are. And just doing a little deductive reasoning from things I have read, I'm guessing about 30% of the voters will always vote. 30% of the people will never vote. And then you got in the middle, you got this 40% group. And roughly half of them will vote in any given election, presidential election. Less will vote if it's a primary election or a local election. So you got that group. Now, there are studies of people who are these iffy voters. And it shows that they're pretty much evenly divided between Dem Democrats and Republicans. About half of them lean one way, half the other. So they're not all, you know, uh, to fit any category of, of people ethnically. They, they break down about a little over 70% white, about 13% black, which is exactly the population percentages we have in the country. They do tend to be uh, a little less educated and have lower incomes than the people who do vote. So maybe they feel like they don't have as big a stake. I don't know. They have all kinds of different motivations. Some of it's just you know, laziness. Now, if you look at the, these groups and you think about it for a second, if they're iffy voters and they see, let's say they're Democrats, and half of them are, and the other half are Republicans. If they're Republicans, lean Republican, and they see that their candidate is, is behind or it's a close election, are they more or less likely to vote than if he was ahead? Now, in my case, during the primary, because I knew Trump was going to win, I didn't vote. I was an iffy voter. When, I'm an iffy voter when it comes to primaries. And since Trump didn't need my vote, I didn't go. On the other hand, if you look at the Democrats who are iffy voters, if they see, if they're told by the media, a media that they trust, a media that they watch, that, you know, Hillary, or in this case, Joe Biden, is up you know, somewhere close to 10%, does that make them more likely to vote? just as likely to vote or less likely to vote? My guess is it's less likely to vote. So if the media is telling people that Biden is so far ahead, just as they told people that Hillary Clinton was so far ahead, isn't it conceivable that this big swath of voters, the iffy voters in the middle, in the center, on your party, which is probably about you know, maybe 20%, are less likely to vote? 
if they think they don't need to vote. That's the unintended consequences. If the media thinks by manipulating these polls, and they do, and if you go into the details, you can often see how they do. If they think they're helping Joe Biden, or they thought they were helping Hillary Clinton, is it conceivable they're actually hurting their candidacy? They're hurting the candidate. They're hurting their election prospects. I mean, if you go back and you look at the 2016 election, and you look at some of the border states, not border, territorial border, but I mean the uh, swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, places like that. I mean, I think Pennsylvania, uh, which is my old home state, uh, Trump won by, I don't know, it was 20,000 votes and there were like 7 million cast or something. It was a very tiny percentage. And if you look at just Philadelphia County, with the heavy minority neighborhoods. I mean, the minority vote, uh, Hillary carried those counties big time, but not as big as Barack Obama had in 2012, or especially compared to 2008. She was losing thousands of votes in Philadelphia alone, just Philadelphia. The same thing's happening in Pittsburgh and some other cities in Pennsylvania. It's not inconceivable that if some of these people felt totally un unmotivated to vote, she doesn't need my vote. She's up by eight. She's up by 10. She's up by nine. She's up by seven. No, I'm not going to bother. That these polls and the perceptions of these polls by people who trust the pollsters who are being reported about on the networks that they trust didn't vote. And that these polls are actually helped defeat Hillary Clinton. Now, I know that maybe that's a big leap. But it, it, it struck me going through these polls that it's not inconceivable, but that's what's been happening. They do this, they think they're helping the candidate, but the unintended consequences are they actually convince people that they don't need to vote, and they don't, and then they help their candidate lose. Now, is it the only reason Hillary Clinton lost? No, I don't think it is. But I think it probably is a contributory reason. And they're doing the same thing again this time. They're over-reporting on these polls. They're pushing these percentages up, making it look really bad for Trump. But my suspicion is a lot of these iffy voters who are the ones who will swing the election one way or the other, see this and are less likely to vote. On the other side, if you are a Trump supporter and you're leaning that way and maybe you weren't going to vote, you see that you know, if the election is close or he's way behind, you know, maybe you'll, you'll be more likely to get out there. And I think that that's conceivable too, maybe less so than the Democrats not voting, the Republicans going out and voting more. But I think what's happening is, I know they think they're helping Joe Biden, but they may actually be hurting him. I mean, imagine for Democratic voter turnout, if the day before the election, the polls were saying and being reported by the media as saying it's neck and neck, you know, it's 50-50, it's going to be a real tight election. You know, it's going to depend on how you vote. Are you more likely to vote? I would think you would be if you were a Democrat, an iffy voting Democrat, somebody who votes some of the time. Whereas if the news is saying, don't worry, Joe's up by 10 points, yeah, why should I go to the polls? And that's entirely conceivable to me. Is it conceivable to you? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. I mean, I haven't seen anybody writing about any of this, that these polls, I mean, I see people write that the polls are off. I haven't seen anybody write and raise the prospect that the polls are going to actually hurt Joe Biden because they put him so far ahead. But let me know what you think. If you got some stimulus, mental stimulus out of this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Like I said, leave a comment if you have something you'd like to say. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Subscribe to the channel. That really helps the channel. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, stand tall, face the resistance, and keep fighting.